24-year-old Shelly Mook is still missing without a trace. Authorities are searching for her and working the case hard, but friends and family fear the worst. Never, never would she leave her daughter. Her daughter was her world. She did not leave voluntarily. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation has now been called in to re-examine the case, meticulously looking into all possible suspects, including the handyman she was supposed to meet at her apartment and her new boyfriend. Did you interview the maintenance man? I did not. The law enforcement had already interviewed him and cleared him. Private investigator Kevin Keel was hired by Shelley's family to help find her. Keel says once cops cleared the handyman and the new boyfriend, they shifted their focus back on her ex-husband, Tyler Mook. And it turns out that things in the marriage were a lot tougher than many people realized. He was abusive, at times cruel. Court records show that he pushed her around, snatched her around when he would get upset. There is a record of uh, the domestic violence that was going on in that house. Remember, Tyler says he called the cops the day Shelly went missing, saying she was supposed to pick up their daughter, but never showed. Now cops believe Tyler may have been the last one to see Shelly. In fact, they say she actually stopped at his house with their daughter Liliana in the car. After getting out of school and picking up her daughter, she came to Tyler's residence that afternoon, uh, supposedly to return a box of Tyler's belongings. She used to live at this house. We know that she got there, but nothing. She just vanished into thin air. As Shelly's family suspicions mount around Tyler, Shelly's mother files for custody of six-year-old Liliana. Tyler fights to keep her and is interviewed on camera during this custody hearing. But once on the hot seat, he clams up. You were upset with Shelly's dating other men? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. Shelly's family took him to court because they thought once they took him to family court, he'd answer some questions, but they were wrong. Astonishingly, he pleads the fifth more than 150 times. You exhibited violent outbursts against Shelley as a result of other men. On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. Then, out of the blue, he suddenly answers a strange question about what happened in his house on the day Shelley went missing. Did you have sex with Shelley on February 28th? Yes. What time? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. Why do you think he would answer that question out of all the other ones? It was, uh, it was baffling. Uh, it was almost as if he was proud of being able to say that he had sex with her. And, and we don't really know if that's true. He was proud of it, yeah. absolutely. But now, authorities also interview little Liliana about the day her mother disappeared, and her answers raise a huge red flag. The version that Liliana told was that Shelly got out of the car, went to the door, left her in the car seat. Shelly went inside with Tyler. At some point, Tyler came back outside, got her out of her car seat, took her into the residence, and took her to her old bedroom. She said she never saw her mother when she came into the residence, went into the bedroom. She was told to go to her room, and, uh, and she never saw her mom again. There's no doubt in my mind that she's gone because of him. Police name Mook is a person of interest in Shelley's disappearance, but they declined to talk about the case with Crime Watch Daily. And over to the dumpster. Private investigator Keel has also spent countless hours digging for facts and working closely with Shelly's family and the law. And he has a very bad feeling about Tyler Mook and Shelly's car found burning in a field only hours after her disappearance. I think that Shelly was probably deceased before Liliana was brought into the house by Tyler. And at some point that night, I think Shelly was disposed of and her car was disposed of. And then there is this bombshell. If Tyler was involved, Keel doesn't believe he acted alone. He had to have had help if he were the one that disposed of the car and burned it. Because 
you're talking roughly 30 miles from his home. There's no way he could leave Liliana in bed alone, go burn the car, and then walk home in that amount of time. And 10 days after Shelley's disappearance, Keel also finds what may yet turn out as a key piece of evidence, a surveillance tape from the early morning hours after she went missing. I was able to uncover a video from a convenience store several miles from his home that showed him around 2, 3 a.m. on March 1st, pulling up in his red S10 truck. Does it stop at the dumpster? It does stop at the dumpster for roughly five to 10 minutes. So who has the video right now? The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation has custody of the video. Will they tell you anything about the video? Ah, uh, they will not. Meanwhile, investigators in the custody case are floored by another shocking revelation involving Liliana. They found out that Tyler had been talking to his six-year-old daughter about burning down his ex-mother-in-law's house. That was unimaginable. He wanted to give the little girl matches so that she could actually help burn down her grandmother's house. I mean, this little girl's mother is missing. And now this? Ultimately, Shelly's family wins custody of Liliana, but Tyler is still seemingly obsessed with getting her back. Evidence in this 911 call he made by mistake. Hello. Incredibly, it's a pocket dial from Tyler Mook himself. And they know that I'm not going anywhere right now because I don't have Lily. During the 22 minute call, he talks to his father while they work with power tools. Most of it is garbled, but what comes through seems to be about Shelly's missing person case. They can't prove nothing. They want to come arrest me with a warrant. And he talks about a car. Exactly whose car, we don't know. Don't keep bothering me about that car. And I'm gonna try to bust into that. Minutes later, a second call to 911 comes in from a very concerned Tyler Mook. This one is one he intended to make. Did you get a call from this number here a couple minutes ago? Yes, we had an open line from it. What happens on that open line? Does it get recorded and stuff like that? Investigator Keel says one of the biggest reveals during the call is Mook's state of mind. Tyler's afraid the police are watching him, afraid he's about to be picked up at any time, and just seems really paranoid in the conversation with his father. Mook has never been charged with Shelley's disappearance, and his lawyer has denied he had anything to do with it. But his troubles with the law are far from over. Up next, Tyler Mook leaves Tennessee and heads to Florida. He wants to start a new life with a new love, but now she's terrified too. I just kept fighting and fighting and fighting and that time I thought I was gonna die.